I want to emphasize that this rescission motion is not about whether or not we should adopt the Rural Boundary Clearing Code. And I am frustrated at the misrepresentation that it is a binary proposition about whether we should be in or out. I've consistently claimed that this is a more nuanced discussion that we need to have. And at the moment, we're not having it. It's about whether it will be the practice of this council in this term to implement policies that substantially change current policies, current practices, without consultation, without relevant stakeholders and experts. I find it extraordinary that those here who frequently and publicly profess their respect for, say, the RFS, would actively seek to cut them out and other groups of having anything to say, whether it's for or against this code by ramming it through. It's a substantial change to our land management practices. And it's been perfectly obvious that there's a variety of opinion out there. We've also heard that following the Gospers Mountain fires, the Wallamai Gross wildfire mitigation and community resilience management plan, which will cost between 10 and $15 million to implement, will improve fire breaks and trails and in areas like Bilpin. And we've been furnished proofs that the experts who developed that local plan and are now in the process of implementing it, do not think that the Rural Boundary Clearing Code integrates well into that strategy or provides any degree of fire mitigation given our local circumstances. They do point out, and it makes common sense to me, that the best place for fire breaks are along ridge lines and along forest boundaries, and that they augment existing fire trails, and crucially, that land clearing ought to occur near assets requiring protection. This code does not do that. And the challenges that I laid out at the last meeting have not been answered. It is not enough to reduce this to the proposition that if you support fire safety, that you must automatically support the code. It is clearly not the case. It is not good enough to express support for the code, but then to fail to answer the very reasonable question, why it needs to be adopted now, why it needs to be adopted with no consultation, without any resourcing for compliance or enforcement. It is not acceptable to adopt this summarily without explaining why we can't take just a few months to have those questions answered and then hold a more informed vote towards the middle of the year about whether to proceed. That is what this is about. That's all the rescission motion and the substantive motion that will follow is asking for. It's asking for a few months to have council staff answer those unaddressed issues and to conduct consultation with the stakeholders, including the local RFS. It would be a betrayal of, the, of trust in the community for us not to do so. And frankly, the optics of doing so, given the positions that some councillors have publicly professed to hold about respect for the RFS or support for koala habitats uh, are, are dreadful. The optics are simply politically dreadful. The one example cited by one councillor about why we should adopt this code was freely admitted by that applicant to have nothing to do with reducing their fire hazard. And when it went all the way up the chain and came all the way down... Uh, Councillor Zamprog, no, I was clear at the last meeting when this was discussed, we're not going to discuss an individual circumstances. And they have not, had, and they have not agreed to have their personal details shared in council meeting. Uh, look, I, I, I yield, Mr Mayor, except to point out that when this question was put to that member of the public, they were eager to answer the question in a public... Uh, and I would be too, Councillor Zamprog, if I've been publicly accused of something, but that doesn't make it fair. So please carry on. Look, prudent course of action tonight is to pass the rescission motion and then to give staff a deadline. In speaking with some of my council colleagues, the concern manifestly was that we ask council for reports and then it disappears into the never-never. I want this dealt with before the next fire danger season. We can pass the rescission motion, which simply means pause, and then pass the substantive motion with a deadline to have council come back to us with the relevant information no later than June or July, 
And I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't get behind that. Thank you.